Creating beautiful smooth motion is amazing, but at the end of the day, someone needs to see it and give you feedback. So let me show you a great way to mock up our motion for presentations. Let's dive in. So let's say we have this great piece of motion where we're showing how we're handling the loading state for this gallery app. We need to export this as a GIF or a video and we need to actually share that with somebody. Let me show you how we might do that. I went ahead and exported this as a GIF using GIF gun and now we have this GIF to share. On the teams I've been a part of, something live like a website or a slide deck is a great way for you to continuously update your motion to get feedback easily from other folks. So here we are in a simple deck that I created to show all of the motion mocks that we have. And here we can see that we have this very simple template with this nice little containing background and we've just dropped our GIF in there. This can work. And this is the simplest, easiest way for you to share your motion to get feedback on. Someone else can come in after they get this link, they can comment on this, say this looks great, and so on and so forth. And this is a great way, super simple, to get some good feedback. But maybe you want it to look a little bit better, a little bit nicer. These super sharp edges are not like great to mimic the feel that we have when we have an actual mobile device in our hands. Usually the edges are a little bit more rounded. Um, so let's see how we can make this a little bit better. Let's go ahead and select this. We can go here to our crop image tools. We can go down here to shapes and to this rounded rectangle here. And that gives us this nice controller here, this yellow thing that allows us to change that corner radius. And so we can change it to something that feels a little bit more realistic and matches a normal device. And so we can see we have that here. But let's say we want it to feel a little bit more realistic. So we can actually go in here, we can add a little bit of a stroke, maybe a four point stroke, and boom, that gives us a little bit more contrast here around the edges, makes it feel like it's in some sort of device frame. And then maybe we could actually add a little bit of a drop shadow. I'm not going too crazy with it, you know, I make the opacity pretty low, blur it out a good bit. And now we have a little bit of a drop shadow here on the bottom. And so all of these different things are helping make our presentation and our mocks feel a little bit more lifelike and make them a little bit more presentable. So from here to here, it's feeling a little bit more nicer. It mimics the device frame type of style. Now you may also be asking, hey, what if we actually just use the legit device frame like from iOS or from Android and put that on top of it? You definitely can do that. And there's a lot of free Figma resources. If you just look up device frames, you can find a couple and you can see that here. This is a completely fine way to handle these types of motion mocks. I would say though, when you use a legit device frame like this, your mocks can start looking outdated very quickly. Our devices change so frequently, the different types of devices that we're designing for changes very frequently. When we use a device frame like this, that's a little bit more minimal. Our designs can feel newer for a longer period of time. And when we start anchoring ourselves to the specific device frame, we start to incorporate potentially some other things into our design that are not part of our design. We just want to look at, hey, what does the motion say? And what is the motion doing here? We don't want to bring in other perspectives or other comments of like, hey, this is actually for iOS, not Android. Oh, hey, this is like for a smaller size phone, not a larger size phone. That feedback might be helpful, but the focus of this motion mock is to get feedback on your specific motion. Does the timing feel too quick or too slow uh, the specific motion this cascading effect does that make sense here does it not make sense we want to make sure that our design and our motion is the thing that is shining and taking the focus and when you do something like this that focus starts to fade into the background a little bit because that device frame is so prominent and so my recommendation whenever you're mocking stuff up uh, for a team to get feedback on this is a really nice way to do it this specific framework might not work the best if you're presenting in a portfolio necessarily. Maybe you want like a nice like 3D rendering of an app on the phone and it's kind of like moving around a little bit. Maybe something like that fits your needs a little bit better. For something like that, I would just say, go ahead and get like a subscription to like an Envato or a motion array and just download a free template and use it. It's not really worth you going through the effort of making your own 3D rendered phone thing and it kind of looking okay. Just get a template, pop your screen in there and focus on the work that you are good at, which is doing this UX motion work. So that's a super quick tip on how to present your motion mocks, keeping it super simple, very sustainable and easy for your product partners and stakeholders to give feedback. Catch y'all next time.